Foundations Level B from Lava Chick of English. I wanted to go through and show you what I purchased and what I got in my package from the company. So I started Foundations Level A this last year and typically you can move through to Level B in the same school year, but we took our time going through it. So I went ahead and purchased the Level B package. We'll be starting that this fall with my youngest. It comes with two book options. So these are little readers. This is Fred the Frog. They are early level readers. And these are um, a young artist series. This is, this one's Dan and his skunk. The illustrations are cute too. So we will be going through those. These came in the package. I did have one set of these already from a used lot that I bought from someone for Foundations A, but it was cheaper for me to just buy the whole package than to buy things separately. You also get Whistling Whales. So this is a Beyond the Sounds of the ABCs. Let me show you here. Example, C and K together also make the sound k. A lucky duck drives the truck. And it highlights the letters just like in Doodling Dragons. Um, we always called this a bossy R, E-R. We called it a bossy R when I taught. Fiddlers and farmers fill the chopper. And it highlights all of the E-R. So these are extra sounds that you're going to be learning throughout the year that are not just the sounds of the letters. Then the teacher's manual and the manuscript workbook. So I am sticking with manuscript for my youngest. I taught my oldest cursive first and his print has really struggled. He makes every print letter from the bottom up because that's the way that you make cursive letters. So my intention with my youngest is to start him with manuscript, get him feeling confident in that and then add cursive in because I know it's good for his brain and it's really you get a brain hand connection that happens when you're putting letters together in cursive and I love that, but I want him to be confident. So for, in order for him to feel confident, I think that manuscript is the best option for him and that's just something you have to choose for your own kiddos. So I'll flip the camera around now and show you a little bit inside. Here are two of the Young Artist series books. This one is the beginning, number one. So when we open it, the sk skunk stinks a bit. That is not it, mom thinks. His skunk stinks a lot. Let's pull another page. Stan hugs his mom. So you can see the vocabulary that's in here and the level of reading here. This is the last. This is number eight. So look at how much longer the text gets. The pictures are really cute. Sometimes readers can be really boring, but these are cute. Meg gets a branch and leans in on a tree stump. She drapes a cloth on top of the branch. You can see that they're getting long vowels. They're getting consonant digraphs. They're getting uh, really proficient in reading by this level. In the other stack, here is our first and last book. This is Fred the Frog and My Best Game. When we look at Fred the Frog, this is the first reader. You're introducing sh and th. It always tells you in the beginning. And see how big the letters are here too? This is Fred, he is a frog. They're practicing th, thinks. Oopsies. Okay, and sh, wish. Here is a level eight reader. Level eight, not level eight, a number eight reader. So this is towards the end. And again, it tells you what it's going to go over. Our team is red. The blue team plays well. It is a tough team. Look at all of those words that they'll be learning this year. Once you get to this point, this is where reading really starts to click and the kiddos can start reading much longer passages and feeling more confident in their reading. So those are the readers. Okay, I try to change the angle a little bit here. This is the teacher's manual for Foundations B. I purchased this new, whoopsies, and now I'm shaking y'all. Sorry if you're getting dizzy. Like I said, we're low budget here. So <laughs> we've got the scope and sequence in the beginning. They're learning uppercase letter writing through this, okay? Here's a list of high frequency words, the different phonograms that you use, okay? And then I'm gonna flip 
all the way. So 41, the, the lessons go up in number as you move through A, B, C, and D. So the last book ended with lesson 40, I believe. So 41 should be the first lesson in here. So when we look, you'll see that you're blending words with oral phonemic awareness. This is kind of a starting page. So yes, 41 is the beginning. You're going through and picking out what's uppercase and lowercase and noticing the difference between those. They're working on uppercase handwriting. So they're learning how to write S either in cursive or in manuscript, depending on what you choose. It is nice if you're going to reuse this for other kiddos and maybe you have one kiddo that wants to start with cursive or that you feel needs to start with cursive or one kiddo that you want to switch to manuscript. It's all right in one manual together. So you're not selling and buying different manuals. It tells you what to read, what cards to pull out in your phonogram cards. And then, um, like I said, what to, what to read in Whistling Whales. The phonogram sh is the next thing here. And then spelling just like we did in the last level. And then it'll tell you what to do in the worksheet too. So this is a worksheet matching pages five and six. They're reading the, the words aloud. So let's flip to the back. Let's look at a later lesson. So this goes through 80. This is 74. So they're learning O-U-G-H and the sounds that it makes and how many sounds it has. It has six sounds. So you can see that this is an advanced technique to learn all of those sounds and this is part of the reason why I wanted to hold out until I felt like my kiddo was ready for this level and I really think that we will be be ready for it. It goes through the different words that you'll be doing in the worksheet, what to read in Whistling Whales, and then it gives you options too of games that you can play. So this is a Play-Doh activity that you can do. Then there's of course spelling words, was thought that wall king. Reading through a book, What Am I? This is a book that you'll find in the back of the uh, student book. Handwriting practice, okay? And then let's look at the very last lesson before they're ready to move on. Okay, so this is 80. They're working on long vowels and vowel combinations. So O-A, they're playing, you can play baseball individually or if you have other kiddos to have them play it together there's an initial sound game here so they're going to change uh, the word coat they're going to change the last sound to ch and make the word coach so it's playing with the letters and you can use letter tiles for this or you, if they really enjoy writing on a whiteboard or something you can use that as well so they continue i think there's a dog scratching the door here um, they continue and they keep changing to, to make new words, which is an activity that I liked to do when I taught reading um, with my kindergartners too. It's a really a fun way for them to see how words are built together. Here's some more spelling words. So this is the last lesson, like actual lesson lesson in level B and they're writing and spelling the words read, one, boat, coat, and head. It also tells you how to go through this. So if you're someone that wants to be told what to do, this is a great option. Otherwise you can just go, okay, well, I know how I'm, how I'm going to teach this and do it on your own. But if you're someone that likes to be given a little bit more direction, this really gives it to you, which is nice. Um, they're going to play a game, word slap. They're going to practice handwriting and then they'll do one of the readers. So this is one of the actual little books that you'll read together. And then at the end of every, section that there's usually a little bit of review. So this is an assessment. We're going to go through and see what they have learned, whether or not they're proficient in it, or if you need to review any more. Um, you know your kiddo if you're homeschooling. And so you may want to skip these or you may want to do them just to see what's next. So this is the teacher manual for level B. Here is the Foundations B Manuscript Workbook. So again, this is available in manuscript or cursive, depending on what you're teaching your child. These also come in a digital format if you want. When you look here, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it has the perforated pages. A lot of times I like to pull these out after we've done them. So the bulk, the bulk of the book starts to wear down and we can see how much we have left, which I think is sometimes helpful for kiddos to know that they are so far 
done with the book so far. So here's an early lesson. You can see that they're playing tic-tac-toe. So when you are playing this with your child, you would take turns and you would say, okay, well, I'm going to mark X and I'd mark X. Okay. If they're going to, going to mark something that has multiple sounds, then they have to say multiple sounds. So G, J, they have to say both before they can mark them off. You can see that they're practicing uppercase S. It also gives the comparative here, which I think is helpful too, of what the lowercase letter looks like. And the nice thing in this is that it offers both the straight option and then the slanted option. Some curriculums only teach this slanted option, but most often I teach the straight option because that's a natural way for kiddos to write. And if you aren't moving directly into cursive, I, I really like using the straight letters. So here's another option for reading. Again, these activities are just reinforcing what you've learned. So they're reading the sentence, not sentence in this case, they're reading the words and matching the picture. And so that continues on the back and then you move on to the next lesson. Let's flip to the back. We'll find a, okay. So this is a game that you're going to play. Here's some words that you're going to use. Let's look at level 60, level lesson 68. I'm not a professional y'all. This is the letter Z, obviously you can see that. Here's a bingo card to play. Bingo, these are all vowel sounds too, so these are great to keep reviewing. And again, you're, they're learning what those little symbols mean with you as you do it. There's a spelling mystery game. Another fox in the hen house game that says trap at the bottom. Okay, let's flip all the way to the back. Here's level, lesson 73. I keep wanting to say level you can see that the sentences here are longer. It's not just two words anymore. They're reading a whole sentence. They're playing bingo with words. They're copying sentences. And like I said, typically, maybe I didn't say it in this one, but typically with Logic of English, it tells the kiddos to pick the line that they want to read it on. And most of the time with letters, they want them to write it just a few times to practice it and then also practice it in other mediums, like on a whiteboard or a chalkboard. And I find that my kiddo likes to write it off more often, but for a sentence, he may want to write it a lot less. So they give you line options for them to choose what they're most comfortable with, which I think is really good. So once again, we see that things are getting longer and more detailed. If we flip all the way to the back here, this is lesson 80. Okay, you can see some of the words that they're practicing. These are the phonograms that they're practicing. These are hitting at that end level. And then these are some of the last sentences. So we've got EA, eat and beach. We've got high, that long I sound here. We've got sky, we have long E in team, we have the ch sound in match, and that's where they're headed in this workbook. Thank you for joining me in the walkthrough of Foundations Level B. I'll let you know kind of at the end of the year what we think and how it worked for us. I really do plan on continuing with Logic of English at least through the Foundations Level. So we've got another uh, couple of books and series to go through to get through it, and I'll keep you updated. Thanks. Mm -hmm.